Uh, so this is our Ed 670 Growing Leaders Within presentation. Uh, I'm Slade Simpson. I'm Judah Berlingame. And I'm Kyle Wordleman. All right, for a more formal introduction, um, I teach nine through 12 social studies at the Fergus Falls ALC. Uh, this is my 10th year there. And I have just recently, last year, finished my master's in, in educational leadership. And I'm working to complete my Minnesota principal license by the end of this summer. Yeah, and I'm Kyle Wordleman. Uh, I teach uh, fifth through eighth grade special ed EBD. I work primarily with seventh and eighth graders at a middle school in Colquay. And uh, the plan is to finish up my master's in ed leadership this fall. Perfect. And then I'm Slade Simpson again. Uh, I teach uh, high school math at St. Michael Albertville High School. This is my fifth year there. Um, and I'm pursuing my master's in curriculum and instruction um, with an emphasis in teacher leadership. All right, for our first uh, phase, realize, uh, the definition that we came up with was administrators come to the conclusion that teacher leadership is essential in today's schools for improvement or transformation. And in my school, I'm specifically going to be focusing on the Fergus Falls High School, which includes the ALC where I teach. Um, we are, we definitely fit this phase. We have a new high school principal this year who is awesome. Uh, and he created a teacher leadership group that was voluntary and uh, really encouraged specific people to be there, but he was not going to say, hey, I really, I, you have to be there. Um, and we've had some professional development um, in culture building and PLC training. And I think we could use more of that as well. Yeah, for me, uh, it's absolutely present. We're on our third year uh, within literacy focus instructional coaches. And so uh, this past year, we just added two new instructional coaches. So we have four full-time instructional coaches. Uh, there's a literacy lead team. Um, and then there's kind of some other teams that have organically uh, started up on their own um, that aren't just like, you know, your year to year committees that have come up. And so there's definitely an encouragement that uh, um, teacher leadership is important. And then I would definitely agree that our school is in this phase. Um, our similar to Judah, our uh, high school principal was new two years ago. And he's really made an effort to create kind of multiple task force teams comprised of some of our teacher leaders um, and has verbalized the need for those leaders um, to come forward in the building and um, create and maintain some of that positive culture and um, take the lead on a lot of the, the decisions that are made throughout our building. All right. The second phase here, teachable skill. Well, our definition is administrators recognize particular characteristics and skills essential to the development of teacher leaders. Uh, my school is in this phase. Uh, our principal during his first summer met with all of the staff who were willing to come in. Obviously there were some who weren't willing to come in, but that taught him pretty quickly, which which would fit into the uh, characteristics and skills essential for the development of teacher leaders. Um, and some professional development that I would like to see in our district would be specifically for teacher leaders um, is to develop those five skills that are listed in the text. And for our building, um, it's, it's present and it's also not present. Um, we've absolutely identified leaders within our building and you know i think at, out of identifying these leaders they've, we've seen the characteristics and um you know appointed leaders in different areas but i i don't see us you know transferring into or taking that next step into teaching skill to develop leaders and so i think really uh what's needed uh, the the no part or we're not yet there was uh, really just needing to be more intentional about uh, teaching skill and not being so focused on, you know, leaders and transferring content and knowledge, but actually skill in leadership. 
And I think it's, you know, we're at this point as a school as well um, within these task forces that I mentioned on the previous slides. Um, those are kind of the teacher leaders that are passionate about, you know, one subject or the other, whether it's instruction, whether it's technology or equity uh, for a few examples. And then those teams will meet as a group uh, to kind of build those skills and figure out what's important and then um, be able to design professional development to um, integrate other staff who are not within that task force with those skills. Our next phase is recruit teacher leaders. Our definition is administrators develop a strategic recruitment plan and assess who possesses the characteristics and possibly already have the skills necessary to be a teacher leader. Um, my school is in this phase, yes, for sure. Um, our principal, like I said before, sought out specific teachers with passion and initiative, those characteristics that really define uh, a teacher leader. And I think that we could work towards training teachers to recognize those characteristics. And oh, I got cut off a little bit. Characteristics in each other and in our students. So that way we can help pull it out of each other. So it's not all on the administration. Sure. Yeah. And for our building, uh, it's, it's both present and, and not quite there. Um, you know, we've identified leaders within our building. Uh, but sometimes we've we've fallen back on okay. There's we got these postings for instructional coaches, and so uh, apply for those, right? So they may encourage some, and then it's kind of going through the application process. And I think I think maybe there could be a more strategic plan to uh, recruiting because um, I think in some some of the committees and some of the teams we've got in the building. Um, they've been established, you know, from 10 years ago and the same staff have been doing it year after year. And there, there's not always new, new, uh, staff or, uh, new members in different teams. So, so I think, you know, just being more strategic and recruiting new, new blood in it. So, yeah. And then in our school, um, you know, there's specific teachers that are identified, you know, for topics that they have kind of more of an expertise or interest in, whether it's they went to get a master's degree in it or um, they're just interested in, in it and study it kind of on their own time. And then one thing that I, I really enjoy is that our um, teacher leaders also do some of that recruiting. So it's not just all the administrators. Um, those teacher leaders obviously are immersed within the teaching staff every day and have relationships with other um, teachers in the building. And so they're also able to, um, you know, kind of go over to other teachers and say, Hey, I'm, I know you're interested in this because we've had conversations about it. Why don't you come along and join this team and we can, you know, add your skills and um, see what you can bring to the table as well. So, um, you know, that helps provide good professional development for the staff, as I mentioned earlier. All right. The fourth phase is grow leadership capabilities. And our definition is administrators need to establish a culture that provides opportunities for teachers to lead and fosters growth in leadership cap capabilities. Um, our school is in, my school is in this phase. Um, our administration, not just the new high school principal, but other administrators as well, really encourage us in trying new things and and uh, being willing to fail at things. Um, and, and they do a really good job of celebrating staff who do that. Um, there's, there's a lot of emphasis on, look at this cool thing that we tried, look at this new idea that we're doing. Um, and we actually have a teacher leadership cohort with MSUM that started, I think about three semesters after I started. So I ended up missing out on that group and on the the discount, but I'm I'm not at all bitter about that. <laughs> yeah, in uh in our building, we're I I feel like we're absolutely doing this. Um, many of our many of our staff meetings, our our administrator introduces, kind of gives us five minute riff, and then uh, hands it over to instructional coaches or um, whoever the the lead learner is in that day or whoever's presenting that chosen day, you know, so I've done stuff on trauma. I've done stuff on restorative practices for our staff. Um, 
And it, I, I think he really empowers us and, and, and allows us opportunities to lead. Um, twice, twice this year, we've had lead learner days on our professional development days where um, we've, we've chosen to uh, present a, a lesson and a new approach um, for our, our, our colleagues. And so, um, you know, the, the offer's been on the table, like, hey, do you want to share with your colleagues? And, and then we work with the instructional coaches, and then we've got a, a 40 minute lesson period where we're teaching each other, and then we kind of debrief afterwards. And so we'll have, you know, six, six different people sharing on a day, and it's, it's a really pretty cool opportunity where we're given the opportunity to, to lead and grow. Yeah, uh, that sounds pretty similar to our building. Um, I, I definitely experience where a lot of our teacher leaders um, in those different uh, cohorts and, and expertise areas are the ones who are kind of leading the activities for our staff. So that's a good thing, I think, um, and that fits well in this category. Um, but I have seen instances where administration, you know, kind of says that they're supportive of teachers um, trying out these new skills in their classroom or whatever the case may be that they're taught and then um, but they're not always able to implement it um, due to constraints. So whether that's, you know, timing or schedule, um, we have some pretty rigid policies that I think need to be reworked. Um, and so it's kind of a catch 22 a little bit where they say that they're supportive and we're doing these things, but sometimes it seems like we're just doing them to say that we did them and not actually put them into practice. So I think we need to, to work on that as a building a little bit more. All right. The fifth phase is nurture leadership qualities. Our definition is administrators help teacher leaders to understand their role as a leader in the school or connect the dots and provide personalized coaching and mentoring. For my school, this is a yes and a no. Um, I've experienced that since the beginning of my grad school and my um, practicums that I've been doing advocating for myself that I that I have definitely seen my administrators nurturing leadership in my in me but I don't know that if I hadn't taken that step to do it for myself which is part of the initiative characteristic um, I don't know that they would have nurtured those leadership qualities in me or in others if they're not specifically heading that direction um, and I think some professional development that we that would really benefit us is to provide more tasks to stretch teacher leaders. Um, we used to have leadership groups where leadership teams where the entire meeting was just information and go tell this to your departments. It wasn't ever, hey, how are we going to do this together kind of a thing. But now it's becoming more of that. Yeah, and for, for my building, uh, similar to Judah, uh, you know, those with initiative have been given opportunities, you know, or those, those that have spoken the loudest some have been given opportunities and um i think i think from my experience um in the opportunities i've had um i've been encouraged like yeah this is great thanks for doing this but but there's been little little coaching or mentoring um after the fact or even helping say preparing something you know um, so just what's needed i think you know time and and a plan for skill development um that nurture, that nurturing the leadership, um, as compared to, you know, making sure we're we're transferring information or um, sharing content. Yeah, and I think um, you know, I think we have some instructional coaches that you know provide more personalized um, coaching and and mentoring, but um, I think very little comes from administration. It's it's almost easy for them to say hey, we have QCOMP coaches and instructional coaches and stuff, so we're going to take that off our plate a little bit. And I think that's been a, a byproduct of um, the need for more time and more staff. Um, one of our administration positions got dropped for this year, and so each administrator needed to kind of take on a little bit more of that responsibility. Um, and then I also... Um, had an interview with with our administrator uh, not too long ago for an assignment and and um, 
she talked about, you know, the, the need for more staff to kind of cover classrooms so that um, staff can get into um, their peers' classrooms, their, their coworkers' classrooms, and, and that could provide for some more of that personalized coaching and stuff too, um, kind of that trickle-down mm-hmm. effect from administration to leader to peer um, and, and be able to uh, provide some of those things that some of our teachers already know and have some of those leadership qualities. So I think it kind of, you know, we're kind of there and do some of the good things, but there's definitely some things that we need to, to do more of. All right. The sixth phase, sixth phase is empower teacher leaders. Our definition is administrators have a plan of empowerment that includes support of the teacher leader and they are given authentic decision-making authority. Uh, For my school, I say that we are a yes and a no for this. Um, We are given some authentic decision-making authority. Right now, our administrator is allowing teachers to help create the master schedule with some guidance, but he's giving a lot of of, uh, authority over that to, to the actual teacher leaders. Um, but the part where it's a no is I don't know that there's a definite plan for this. Um, I think I think there could be more um, development in, in arranging individual meetings with teacher leaders to plan some of this out. Yeah, for, for my building, I'd, I'd say, you know, we're, we do this pretty well. Um, I think last year was a great example. Um, where our admin really stepped back uh, from an area that they really um, were were not too sure of when when we had to to do a lot of you know the distance learning and so much technology and and really allowed our instructional coaches to lead and 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 decide hey hey this is these are the resources we're going to need for for distant learning and uh, you know to to make decisions on um, our schedule and and how to we really revamped our schedule last year and, and kind of rolled that into this year. And a lot of that was led by staff um, to make some of those big decisions of what was best for them um, and not just an admin, you know, kind of top down approach to make decisions. Yeah. And then to piggyback off that, Kyle, I, I found the, the same thing you did, but almost in reverse, I felt like the last couple of years, our, our building, um, kind of took the opposite approach where during the COVID stuff, where we're doing distance learning and hybrid learning, and it was almost like it was more, or they were giving us less authority to kind of decision make, um, on our own and in our classroom. So, um, you know, we were kind of told how our Google classroom needs to be set up like step by step by step and not able to, um, do what works best for us. And so I think that, that was a product of of admin. Sometimes they ask us for for ideas and to to problem solve and to make help make decisions, but they don't always necessarily utilize that input. And then sometimes we don't necessarily know why they didn't use that input. You know, I understand we can't make everybody happy, um, but when it feels like your staff's not being listened to, um, I think that you know the resources that they need to be using would be you know being more transparent you know communicate a little bit more um why are those decisions being made the way that they are so i think that's the negative part i think our school does do a good job of asking so that's a positive part but i think we need to go a little bit further rather than just ask okay now what do we do with that information how can we incorporate that information that our teacher leaders are giving us uh, the admin and then and then be able to make uh, decisions that work for the majority rather than you know what's easiest or whatever the case may be. All right for the final phase, ongoing professional growth opportunities. Our definition is administrators instill the need for ongoing professional learning and model the expectation to engage in effective and strategic professional learning. Um, I said no on this one. And it's not because we don't value uh, professional learning or we don't have it. Um, But the way I view it is that we don't really have specific professional learning to develop teacher leadership. Um, 
And I think that a, a plan that I would like to see implemented in our district is to establish a an actual year long plan to develop some of those teacher leader skills so that we're not um, expected to figure it out on our own as we go. Sure. Yeah, in our building, I, I'd say I'd say we're we're there. Um, you know, we've got varied opportunities where uh, we've got um, different PLC groupings. We've got kind of a mixed PLC and a, a content area PLCs, and and within those, you know, there's there's a there's a constant plan of, um, you know, we're forming action plans, and and there's always this push to to make progress in your action plans and to to work with your other uh, PLC group members to and encourage each other and, and help each other, and so there's there's often a, an encouragement and expectation to engage in um, effective professional learning. Um, and I'd, I'd say, you know, there's an encouragement kind of for, for new, new opportunities um, if it fits within our vision, you know, so um, I'm a part of a group that's really looking at our behavior. We've got kids vaping all the time and we're trying to, trying to decide, okay, how, like, how do we not just suspend them and kick them out, you know? And so like, we've got this group that's trying to, with some restorative practices, that's um, trying to figure out how can we improve on this? And so there's a group of us that are really kind of trying to dig into this. And that wasn't, that wasn't pushed by administration. Hey, this needs to be done. It was just kind of like we saw a problem and, and, and took it on. And I think that's a byproduct of just always seeking improvement and learning. Yeah, um, I definitely think our building is in this phase and does well with it. Um, I mentioned the the task force groups that before that our principal is kind of headed up making um, in order to you know make decisions and and solve some of the problems that we have in different areas of our school. Um, and what's really awesome, what I really appreciate that our administrators are doing is they will come and be parts of of those different groups and. There's always an administrator in one of those groups, um, and sometimes there's multiple. And so um, you talk about that modeling professional growth and the expectation to engage. Um, they're definitely doing that. And, you know, they don't take over that meeting. It's really they do a good job about letting the, the teacher leaders in there do their thing um, and do what they were brought in to that group to do. But they are also really good about picking and choosing their spots of when to add some input. And then they're also um, really good about helping out where they can. So I've really appreciated that uh, from them this year. All right. And then our last slide here is our summary slide. So the first bullet point as a group, what phase is your school or district at presently? So. I think all of our schools kind of seem to line up with the first three phases. I think our schools, um, Kyle, Judah, and myself, my, my school that I, we all work at, you know, we're, our, our first three phases are pretty, pretty nailed down. But after that, I think our schools are um, kind of all over the place and differ in our approaches and success to some of the remaining phases. Yeah, in regards to, um, does our group see the benefit of developing a culture of teacher leadership in our schools? Uh, absolutely. You know, our schools, though it, though it looks differently for each of us, um, as Slade shared, but, uh, you know, we, we see the benefit of it. And, um, I, I think, you know, I can speak for, for us too, as, as we're seeing that in our administration too, you know, where they see the, the value of it, though it's in different ways. Um, there is teacher, teacher leadership being developed. And finally, are, are there current challenges at our schools that teacher leaders might be able to resolve at the moment? I, I think that there are frequently challenges that, you know, each of us have differently from district to district and that we've spoken about throughout this presentation that all require different levels of, of teachers stepping up into leadership roles. And I think that the, the style of each administrator in each school district will really determine how much impact our teacher leaders have on that particular challenge. And that is our presentation. So thank you very much.